On today's show, the Dacia Spring EV promises a future where electric vehicles aren't all about bells and whistles and more about being truly affordable. Tesla updates its entire range of vehicles with improved range while lowering the price of the Model S in response to the lowest priced Lucid Air. And General Motors' autonomous vehicle arm Cruise Automotive gets the go-ahead to let its autonomous vehicles go completely driverless in San Francisco. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome to another weekend roundup into the world of clean cars and renewable energy. Thank you for joining me. Thanks to the seemingly endless stream of high-end, high-ticket electric and plug-in hybrids entering the market, it's all too easy to forget more affordable plug-in options. But this week, as part of its 10-day-long e-ways event, Renault's budget-oriented brand, Dacia, unveiled the production version of its Dacia Spring electric car. Essentially, a European market version of the Renault KZE that's due to go on sale in India and China next year, this subcompact four-seater is aimed at budget-conscious drivers and does away with lots of the bells and whistles of higher-priced electric cars. You can get a centre touchscreen as an optional extra. You can get DC quick charging as an optional extra. And it has what I guess is a range of around 120 miles or so in real-world conditions. 191 kilometers. But it's expected to sell for under 20,000 euros before incentives, which means in some countries in Europe, it could cost under 10 grand. Now that's impressive. Tesla has a reputation for just tweaking the specifications of its vehicles as and when there are tweaks to be made. But this week, Tesla actually upgraded specs for all of its vehicles in one fell swoop. Model X Long Range Plus was given a 20-mile, 32-kilometer range boost to 371 miles, or 597 kilometers, with Model X Performance getting a slight increase as well. The Model S Performance got a 39-mile, 62-kilometer range increase to 387 miles, 623 kilometers. But there was no change for the Model S Long Range Plus. The Model 3 got a new interior and a chrome delete, as we mentioned in last week's show, plus a new heat pump and increases in range for both standard range plus and performance, with the latter now getting 315 miles, 506 kilometers per charge. Model Y also gets a boost, with long-range dual-motor Model Y now rated at 325 miles, 515 kilometers per charge, with a smaller increase in range for the Model Y performance. Volkswagen has officially placed an order for more than 2,200 new production line robots for use in its Emden, Hanover and Chattanooga production facilities. Destined to be part of Volkswagen's brand new electric vehicle ID production lines, they will be used to produce the ID4 in Chattanooga and Emden from 2022 onwards and to produce the ID Buzz minivan at the Hanover production line starting in the same year. While we don't have an official production name yet for the ID Buzz, I'd love to see it called the ID2, if only because of its historical connection to the Volkswagen Type 2 Combi that still, to this day, remains one of Volkswagen's most popular vehicles. And if you're confused about ID4 production dates, don't be. For now, the ID4 is being produced alongside the ID3 at Volkswagen's Zweikau facility. Last week, we told you that Waymo has been given the green light to open up its fleet of Waymo One autonomous minivans to let members of the public ride in them for the first time. And this week, we've got another autonomous vehicle story to share. As announced in the middle of this week, GM-owned autonomous vehicle startup Cruise has been given the green light by the California Department of Motor Vehicles to transition to fully autonomous vehicle testing in San Francisco. That's using its fleet of specially built Chevrolet Bolt EVs. Previously, a safety driver was required to be in the car behind the wheel at all times, but now the cruise fleet, which are a common sight on Frisco roads, can be operated fully autonomously. 
It's one of 60 autonomous vehicle companies that's got an active permit to test with a safety driver in California, but only the fifth to receive permission to test with no driver. Along with the Tesla upgrades I covered earlier in the show, this week saw not one, but two price drops for the Tesla Model S. The first came as a result of Tesla's general lineup upgrades, but the second came directly after Lucid announced its entry-level Lucid Air, order books for which have just opened, would start at $69,900. It offers 406 miles, that's 653 kilometers of range per charge, a little bit more than the Tesla Long Range Plus Model S. But in response to that price, Elon Musk announced on Twitter that, quote, the gauntlet has been thrown down. The prophecy will be fulfilled. Model S price changes to 69420 tonight. I'm not sure if this move is just Musk being Musk. The price change certainly includes his favorite numbers. But honestly, it also makes him look a little like a middle schooler who can't be beaten at anything. Sorry, Elon. Mitsubishi has just unveiled its production version of the Eclipse Cross PHEV, time to coincide with a redesign of its Eclipse Cross family. Fitted with a modified version of the plug-in hybrid drivetrain found in the larger Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, this compact crossover plug-in has a 2.4-litre gasoline engine and twin electric motors, 70 kilowatt and 60 kilowatts rear and front respectively, which means even when the engine is not running, it is possible to have electric or all-wheel drive capabilities. The 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack is good for up to 45 kilometers, 28 miles, on the WLTP test cycle, but it's not destined for North America. Those in Europe, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand should get it, however, and I think it still comes with Chidemo DC quick charging. NHTSA has officially opened a preliminary investigation into three separate fires involving the Chevrolet Bolt EV. The reported cases thus far all appear to have started in the same part of the car, in the battery area under the rear seat. But they also started in different circumstances. In one case, the car was plugged in and charging from a domestic charging station when it caught fire. But in another, the car caught fire after being driven 12 miles after being fully charged. Given the recent issues with LG Chem's battery packs and the Hyundai Kona Electric, a car that was recalled last week to rectify a battery monitoring defect that could cause an electrical short in the pack, I've got to say I expect something similar for bolts in the future. As usual, since this is a developing story, we will keep you posted. If you're in the US, the chances are the upcoming election is at the forefront of your mind. I voted this week. But if you're in Massachusetts, you're also going to get an interesting ballot measure to consider other than the usual stuff and who you want in the White House. A measure that could change who can see and use vehicle telematics data. And Tesla wants you to vote no on the measure. Question one asks voters to decide if they want third-party auto repairers and owner enthusiasts to have access to their car's telematic system. It's part of an extension of a previous successful ballot measure that forced automakers to give independent repairers access to diagnostic information in the Commonwealth. It was a success for the right to repair movement. There is significant support for this measure, but Tesla says voting yes would put it at risk of cyber attacks. We'll know in just under three weeks what the outcome of the ballot will be, so I'll keep you posted. Back at the start of this year, Fisker unveiled its ocean crossover at CES. That concept was, we understood, built on the MEB platform that Volkswagen uses for its ID3 electric car. For some time, it was expected that Fisker would license the MEB platform from Volkswagen so that Fisker could make the Volkswagen MEB the basis for mass production of the ocean. But this week, Fisker caught us all out by announcing that it secured a manufacturing contract with Magna Stair, a well-known automotive production company that actually makes the Jaguar I-Pace. Fisker now says the ocean will be built on its own FM29 platform. In its press release announcing the deal, Fisker says it expects to deliver the ocean SUV with a price tag of less than $38,000 before incentives. And finally, Tesla has always done things a little differently. From its referral program to its decision to stay clear of traditional automotive dealerships, its approach has certainly been as far away from your average car company 
as it's possible to get. And one of those unique points of difference has been Tesla's no-quibble return policy. Started last year, Tesla would give customers up to seven days to make sure they were happy with their purchase or return it for a full refund, as long as there was no physical damage to the vehicle and it had less than 1,000 miles on the clock, you could take your Tesla back for up to seven days. To my knowledge, very few, if any people, actually took up Tesla on that, but late on Friday we learned that it's a program Tesla has now quietly ended. I'm not sure if it's because nobody used it, but Tesla certainly did change some of the terms over the last year to stop people from abusing it. With COVID-19 still hampering in-person Tesla store visits around most of the world, it's not clear what happens next. But if you're someone who was buying sight unseen away from a Tesla store, I'd love to know what your new experience is. Let me know below. And on that note, we're done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't switched to yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to switch. And when you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. I'll be making more great content for you and joy next week. But until then, please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands and keep yourself healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.